Hey, what's going on YouTube? Today we are gonna be taking three different species of panfish and we're gonna be cooking them whole to find out which one tastes best. The reason that I'm even doing this video is because of you guys and your comments in the last video I filmed. There were so many comments saying, why are you filleting bluegills? We don't fillet our bluegills. We cook them whole and they're so much better and you get so much more meat and flavor out of that method. So I decided to give it a try. And not only am I gonna try bluegills, I'm also gonna try crappies and perch today and we're gonna find out which one's the winner so let's get started first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this tub about a halfway with water and this is gonna keep our scales from flying off the fish this was another idea I got from that video in the comment section people said use water it will keep your scales from flying all over and making a huge mess I also have a new tool to try it's called the fillet claw some folks sent this to me after that last video and they said hey try this uh, it's actually made for holding down the tail of fish while you skin them, but it also works really well for scaling. So we're going to give that a try, use that for our scaler today. All right, guys, let's start with the bluegill here. So we're just going to put this whole bluegill in the water, and I'm going to hold the tail down just like so, and just start raking those scales forward. This has a little claw on it, as you can see there, and that's what's going to pull those scales off. Just start breaking that down the fish. And yeah, this is slick. All those scales just end up in the water. Get those ones on the top. Make sure you scrape along the, the fins on the bottom as well. And there you have it. One side done, just like that. Pretty slick. We'll turn them over and do the other side here. If you guys have any tips on scaling, make sure you leave them in the comments as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale the other two fish, and then we're going to come back and gut them after we have them all scaled. If I know anything about crappies, I think the crappies are actually going to be easier to scale than the bluegill, because their scales do come off pretty easily. Yeah, this is actually way easier. So as far as uh, scalability, I would say crappie is ahead so far in that category there we go one side done now obviously when we're cooking these fish whole we want to get all the scales off them so you want to make sure you even get like the top of the back and right around the tail and under the tail you know all those scales have to come off all right guys that crappie is ready to go this method with the water it literally leaves no mess whatsoever on the table all right now if I know anything about perch Perch are really have really hard scales and they're one of the hardest fish to cut through when you're skinning them. So I'm assuming that this fish is gonna be the hardest one to scale as well. We will find out. Yes, suspicion confirmed. Perch are the hardest one to scale. They are just, their scales are so dang tough. They're like almost like armor. I mean, it, they're coming off, but you just gotta, you gotta work at it much harder on a perch. All right, guys, got that side done. I would say that was much more of a chore on the perch than it was on the bluegill or the crappie for sure, but it definitely doable. So let's get the other side and then we can get these things gutted out. So there we have our perch and that was a lot of work to scale that fish. I honestly can't imagine scaling an entire meal of perch but if you guys have a better method for scaling perch leave a comment but it's done so it'll work all right guys when it comes to gutting your panfish it's just like gutting any other fish it's much easier with a pair of shears than it is with a knife so I'm just gonna push this in right here at the anal opening and snip right through these fins right here all the way up to the gills then we're just gonna open that fish up like so then all we, all we have to do is get our snips right behind the head here you want to leave this meat and then just snip it snip it like so head and gills come off and then you just have to reach down in here with your thumb and kind of push down and pull forward and all the entrails will come right out 
just like that. There's a little membrane right here. We're gonna kind of scrape our thumb along there, and pull that guy out, just like so. And we're just gonna rinse that one more time, obviously. But that is pretty much a finished, scaled crappie right there. I'll do it one more time on this bluegill. So bluegill's already scaled. We're just gonna push our snips in right here. Snip, 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 all the way up. Go right there. Pull it apart. Grab the gills. My glove's splitting on me. Snap the head back. And then we just snip right here, like so. Push the thumb down and forward. Done. Pretty easy. That's the easy part. Now we're just gonna rinse these off one more time and we should be good to go. All right guys, it's finally time to cook our fish. I've got it all ready to go here and we're just gonna do a simple breaded and fried recipe. So what I've done is I've prepped my fish, I've washed it, rinsed it really nice and I've dried it off with a paper towel, get that excess moisture off. And then I'm scoring just one side of each fish. So I wanted to try one side scored and one side not scored. I got recommendations for both in the comments. So we're gonna try it both ways. And scoring basically is just vertical slices that help the oil get in there and cook the fish a little faster. And they get some of the flavor and seasoning down in there as well. So we're gonna do that on one side. Then we're just gonna take those fish, dip them in an egg wash, and then we're going to use this breading that I make myself. This breading is the best breading I've ever had. Everyone who has it loves it. It's just a simple cornflake flour and seasoning recipe. And I'm gonna leave a card right here for a video that shows you how to make that exact breading and how to use that in uh, fish cooking. And I've got another video on that. So check that out. And um, that's pretty much it. We're gonna get them all breaded up, get that breading all nice on the inside and outside of the fish and into those scores on the sides and while we're doing that we're going to get this oil i got about an inch of oil in here we're going to get that up to about 360 degrees and i'm using a cast iron pan here because we don't want the heat to drop in this pan when we put those big fish in there we want it to stay nice and hot so that that skin gets nice and crispy and uh, that's critical when you're cooking larger pieces of meat like this and deep frying them it's uh it's gonna be probably a little bit longer than it takes to cook your fillets because you know we're, we're cooking a thicker fish so i'm counting on about three or four minutes per side on these fish and we're just gonna cook them up golden brown and then i'm gonna have the kid taste test them because he is uh what i would call a fish expert he's been eating fish probably every single week since he could walk so he ought to know which one of these tastes better oh those are smelling good I would definitely recommend tongs for this. They're gonna work a little bit better than a spatula. I think that's about three minutes. I'm gonna flip them right now. Oh, that is perfect. I think about one more minute on this side and we should be good to go. Yeah, I'd say those are ready. So I'm just going to grab one by one here. Let a little of the oil drain off. Set them on a paper towel right here. Oh man, that looks good. Alright, so one thing I always do is salt my finished fish just like that nice little sprinkle of salt on there and uh, those look pretty dang delicious oh my whole fish we decided to cook them whole this time what do you think huh so i got a perch a bluegill and a crappie and we have to decide which one's better hmm. okay okay so i'm gonna give you one of, a little bit of each here and i think all we have to do is kind of separate right here and the meat should come right off the bone. It comes right off and then you can eat the crunchy tail too. You can eat it like that? Yep, just bite right into it. <laughs> no hesitation. Hmm. <laughs> How 
How is it? It's like a potato chip. Mm. Okay, now I'll go ahead and try that bluegill. I'm gonna try the crappie here. Let's see how, how the flavor is on each one. So that's the side with the slices in it. So I did some slices to kind of help it cook a little bit more. We're gonna try that side and then we're gonna try the side without the slices. You wanna try some of this crappie? Sure. Okay, here's a, here's a bite of crappie. I'm gonna try a bite of this bluegill. Uh-huh. Don't tell me what you think quite yet. It is amazing how much more meat you get from these fish because it pulls all the meat from between the rib bones and like around the fins. There's like zero waste whatsoever. Okay, so we did determine that salt helps. It definitely tastes better with salt because you only get a little bit of salt on this crust on these fish. You don't get as much as you would if you filleted the fish and breaded it. So we're gonna use a little salt. Won't that kind of be cheating though because then these might be better? Well, that's a good point. You got a good point. We should eat this without the salt first mm -hmm. to yep. test. See, this kid's smart. Okay, so now we got to flip them over, try the other side without the slices in it on each one. And then we'll make our final determination. Okay, here's some crappie for you. Do you have salt? No, not yet. There you go. Some more crappie. Okay, so we tried the crappie and the bluegill, right? Okay. So now, last one, the perch. This is the unscored side with some salt. The perch is definitely more chewy. Mm -hmm. I think I'm decided. I think you know which one's best? Yep. Here, eat this little bit more perch before I, before we make our final determination. Okay. One more bite of perch. Okay, buddy. You go first. What was your yeah. what was your number three? What was my number three? Yeah. What was your least favorite? I wasn't one? thinking about that. I think the perch was my third. Okay. And what was your number two? Crappie. Crappie. And? Bluegill was my first. Like Jackson's was number one was the bluegill. And why was that? Um, it's really flavorful and it's the right texture and it's just good. Okay. So Jackson votes bluegill. I'm going to go number three, crappie. Yeah. So they're, they're very different, the crappie and the perch, I noticed. Um, the perch has much more opaque, white, more chewy, solid meat, which I expected. Um, the crappie is much more, it's the mushiest of the three, I would say. Um, good flavor on all of them, but I would say the crappie is a little bit mushier. Number two for me was the bluegill. The bluegill was really good, a little bit firmer and good flavor, but I love perch and I had a feeling I was going to like the perch the best and my favorite was the perch. They were all really good. Definitely I would recommend salt because when you have all that white fish meat that doesn't get seasoned, you have to add a little bit more seasoning after cooking to get that seasoning throughout the meat. Can you eat that? Yep, you can eat the tails, and I'm going to eat the crappie tail right now, actually, while we're talking. But you can eat the top fin, too. Mm. Oh, that one's got spines in it, so maybe not. I think I eat the bottom tail. And the tails are just like little fish, uh, kind of like fish potato chips. Nice and crispy. So it's a very unique way to eat these fish, and something different. Definitely very little waste. You get all that... Uh, meat between the bones and everything. So if you're looking to, to cook fish in a way that's going to give you the most out of your meat, this is the way to do it. And oftentimes guys do this on smaller fish, like if they're catching like six or seven inch bluegills, they want to cook them up. This is a good way to do it, just to get the most you can out of them. Um, but overall, it was a success. Um, you know, I think the perch being my favorite, they are much harder to scale. So I think cleaning perch would be a little bit more of a chore if you were going to do a whole meal of them this way. But, you know, I think the bluegills I can definitely see as the best choice overall just because of the scaling aspects. We might have to do a whole meal of bluegills sometime this way, huh, bud? Okay. Hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my next one. This is that fillet tutorial I mentioned earlier in the video all about how to fillet bluegills. It's a great way to do it. Go watch that one. But I'll take a treat. <laughs> Always a treat. All right, sounds good, guys. We'll see you next time, and until then, get hooked up. Bye. Bye.